read from the second chapter of Acts, familiar passage, but to me it sets the framework for a conversation about adolescent culture. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a great ca- crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard their own language being spoken. And then goes on and says, amazed and perplexed, they, they asked one another, what does this mean? I think simply, uh, there's so many ways, such a complex um, passage here, but simply it means that the gospel is still fundamentally translatable into all cultures. And so as we look at the adolescent culture today, it's, uh, it's still true today. This is a moment in time, sociologists Howe and Strauss talk about a fourth turning, that this is a moment in time that we're in, that there are generations of a great generation and then a building generation, and then a booming generation, and then a busting generation, and then the cycle repeats itself. So we see that in the GI generation, the great generation, the greatest generation following the the Depression. Then after that, the builders, the Korean War vets, that they built uh, built our um, country and built community, and then the me generation, the boomers, where there was so much focus on growth but internal gain. And then we saw the busters, the X and Y generation, uh, rise up in kind of anger and response. And now we're poised in time, according to these sociologists, and I think we can see it for this next great generation that they're calling the millennials, or Barna calls them the mosaics, or the millennial mosaics. And some call them the correctors because they've seen me, my generation, the boomers, and everyone in leadership has failed. These are the kids that came of age when the Twin Towers fell. Um, I I remember my daughter probably being 12 years old and in the car with me, and a true corrector, a true millennial, uh, she was upset about something I said or, or was doing, and she said, Daddy, somebody in the family has to be serious. And so as we look at this adolescent culture, and we're all in youth ministry, whether you admit it or not, if you're going to church, you're in youth ministry, and we can impact kids. There's kind of opposing views, though, about this uh, this age. David Cote talks about the arrested adulthood, this kind of arrested development, that today's uh, adolescents are stuck, and in many ways they're hurt. That's Chap Clark's book and that they are disengaged and that we just beg that they show up or hope that they come back. David Kinneman uh, from the Barna Foundation just wrote a book called You Lost Me about this generation. And the fact is that we are losing some of these kids, but we need to look at why. Jeffrey Arnett, on the other hand, doesn't see this as an arrested adulthood or we're losing them. He he looks at them as emerging leaders or emerging adults. And even that creates a lens of activism. And so we look at through that lens, and I just want to talk about a few things that I'm observing. Certainly no expert here, but the questions that I raise in my own mind as I look at this generation. The millennial mosaics. Certainly, they are postmodern, and they've deconstructed truth. They've deconstructed some of the pillars uh, of science, empiricism, uh, logic, institutionalism, authority. But in some ways, at their very best, as they deconstruct that, they want to reconstruct that in a way that becomes uh, forward-moving, change-oriented, and correcting. This generation is a generation of activism that they no longer want to stay back. I think Rusty George said it best that they don't want to put the money in the plate that goes to a missionary. They want to take it there. And so we see this causal expression inside young kids that are ready to do something and change the world and very missional. Um, Chuck Hunter wrote in Celtic Wave Evangelism about St. Patrick that his modus operandi was believe after you belong. So belong first and then believe. Be involved. And I think even in the adolescent culture today that's so active oriented, perhaps our outreach comes through mission and service. And we engage kids in this causal expression that they don't even know it's the DNA of Jesus. 
but in them is this desire to help and to change, and that we look at them as emerging adults, not arrested, not, uh, not stunted, not, not uh, jaded, but correcting. I see this generation, too, as identifying themselves in some ways as a liberal. Uh, and how, when you sit down with a teenager and say, what does that mean? And they said, well, Jesus was liberal. Jesus was a liberator. Jesus gave liberally, and even their changing terminology uh, that, that my generation would have thought was one thing into one, again, of activism. And so this generation I'm challenged by to think about how can I not be offended, um, discouraged that they have deconstructed things, that they are trying to uh, re-evaluate things, but to come in and own that, to be authentic. This generation wants authenticity and true confession. They want true community even though they're surrounded with this fake cyber community. They can smell it. The authenticity is so big. So then as a leader, I need to come in a posture of authenticity. I need to come in a posture of, uh, of activity and not just program. They don't want to be, uh, as I can see kids, they don't want to be the spectator. They want to be a part of the show. They want to be uh, the, the center of the act activism. And so how do I engage them and encourage them and guide them in a way that doesn't seem linear because this generation is not linear, but bring in truths and bring in, in, in discipleship through relationship and activity. So as I look at this generation, I'm very encouraged, I'm very high on them, I'm very hopeful for them, and certainly we have a lot that needs correcting. And I, my, my challenge to myself is to see them then as engaging, correcting, emerging leaders that I invest in. Not as youth, not as a different culture completely, but ones that I want to invest in and that I know the gospel will be fundamentally translatable into their culture so that they can carry the legacy of Jesus and the message of salvation through Jesus alone to the next generation. I'm hopeful for them and hope we all join. Them.